morning for the Word of God. We thank you for this time, Lord. We pray that you would speak to our hearts. Father, Lord God, not just, not just a word spoken, Father, not just a, a logos word, Lord God, but a rhema, a revelation, Lord, to your people, Lord God, of who you are and what you desire and what you want from us, Lord God. And Father, Lord God, this morning we pray, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, use me this morning. Speak through me this morning. Anoint me one more time. And I give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can we shut this door, somebody? Ushers? Yeah. Amen. Today we're going to be talking. Um, I really believe that the Lord wanted me to, uh, uh, to talk about this, this uh, 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 series that I have called The Purpose. Have you ever heard of The Purpose Driven Life? Uh, how many of you have read that book? Amen. Not, not many. Amen. You, you know, that's a book that, uh, that's what I would call a, a, a must read. Yeah. Right. A must read. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, the man, uh, I can't remember his name. What's his name? Rick Warren. Rick Warren. Uh, he's a pastor of a Saddleback Church in, I think, San Diego, I think, or somewhere in California. But he talks about the purpose-driven life. But he also has a, a book called The Purpose-Driven Church. Right. And uh, so... When I used to work graveyards for this boys, uh, boys home, uh, I had all night, man, a lot of time. And, and I went through that whole book and I read through that book and I gleaned uh, uh, from that book uh, a five-part series called The Purpose Driven Church. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times as Christians, we go through life and, 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 and we, you know, we, we go to church and we do that, but we never understand our purpose. Right. We never understand our purpose as an individual. That's why that purpose-driven church or life is a book that you, you must read. I mean, even if you don't like reading, uh, you know what I mean? Not that I don't like it. I just sometimes have a trouble with reading. Uh, and so I went to the public library of town and, and rented the whole book series of, of purpose-driven life and, uh, and uh, it's a CD form and just listen to it and every day there's like a 40-day journey that you go on and he talks about you know what's your purpose in life what is your purpose to just come to church on Sunday or is there something greater for you than just nine to five going home eating dinner you know I mean whatever it is you know doing more work working outside and then going to bed and getting up again going your nine to five and you know what I mean that gets boring Right. Serving the Lord is not boring. Right. Right. Serving the Lord is something is the greatest journey that you know that you can be on. Right. You know, right. I was looking just as we were sitting. I was sitting there and I'm looking at our flags here, and uh, uh, we, you know, I collected these a long time ago. These little flags, uh, uh, but the, but the thing is, is that we've done a lot of uh, and these represent nations that we've touched. These aren't just flags we bought and said, oh, that looks cool. These are literal nations that we've been at, right. preaching yeah. the gospel of Jesus Christ. I can't really tell you, uh, you know what I mean, especially these ones. I don't really remember which one. I know one's Venezuela, one's Panama, one's Trinidad, Tobago, one's Mexico, you know what I mean, one's Jamaica. Jamaica was the one I've been at personally. Some of the other ones, my daughter, we sent her to Trinidad, Tobago, not Trinidad, Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> Trinidad Tobago, which is an island like by Haiti and different places like that. Venezuela, Panama. These are nations that we've touched with the gospel from Pueblo, Colorado. Amen. Amen. You with me? That God put in our hearts as we're sitting in service. See, so God should be doing something in your life. Right. You shouldn't just be coming to church and then going home living your life. And then coming to church and going home living your life. Right. And you never understand why God saved you. and the, Why did he create you? Did he create you with that 9 to 5? No. Is that your destiny? No. To do that from 9 to 5 and then go home and, you know what I mean, do whatever. And come to men's on Wednesdays and, you know what I mean, and then whatever. You know what I mean? Play basketball and all this is your destiny or is there something greater is there something greater for the church this is something greater for the church world missions a vision a purpose in life say you know what I don't want to just hear my pastor talk about winning souls and taking nations for Jesus I want to go 
experience it. I want to get my bags and go on a plane and fly over the ocean to a place I've never even been to before and preach the gospel to people of different color, of different language. Lay hands on them and watch the Holy Spirit interpret. You may not know their language, but the Holy Ghost will speak to them and get them saved and healed and delivered and your life is ratified and changed. And then you come back over here and realize, man, God didn't save me for a nine to five. He didn't go reach in and pull you out of darkness so that you can just be a good worker. Or you can just be a nice mother. You with me? Amen. Praise God for Naomi said it. You know, she was talking that when being a mom is hard and this and that. But is that all God saved you for? Because one day your kids are going to be gone. And then you're going to wonder, where's my purpose? Waiting for their phone call? They're going to be living their life. Right. You're not even going to, you know, sometimes look back. Maybe once in a while, Mother's Day will give you a call. That's right. That's right. But you're sitting at home, you lost all purpose, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know where you're going. Some of you guys work so hard, but what are you going to do when you get old and you have to retire? And they push you out and say, you're viejito, bud. Get out of here. Some of you are in your 40s and you're pushing 50 years old and you don't realize you're getting older. Yeah. What are you going to do? Every day you're doing your job. You know, I'm thinking, this is my life. One of these days when you're on your deathbed, you're going to say, man, I wish I would have listened to my pastor. There's something greater for my life than just going to church or being a Christian. There's a world out there. There's a place out there. There's a region out there, not just Pueblo. We're praying for revival to hit our city, to hit this region, for God to open doors, for God to send us out. Like if you would have a slingshot, you, you launch that thing, launch us forth, God. Yeah. Like David threw that thing at that giant, that stone, launch us at the enemy like that, God. Yeah. Let us fight back that enemy that's coming against us so hard. Yeah. Let's not just sit there like wimps and take a beating and say, man, look, Lord, I took a beating for you. Fight back. Yes. What's my purpose? What's the purpose of our church? Right. You with me? Right. What is the purpose of your life? Why do we gather here on Sunday morning? Is it just to waste your time? No. Is it just say, wow, I did my two hours, you know, there, and psh, man, I thought it'd never end. Or is there something greater? Are you here this morning? See, some of you are here, but you're still limited. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. You're here, but you're limited. You say, you know what? I've got, you know, even fear has gripped your hearts, and you don't even know it. Right. You're afraid to lift your hands. Yeah. You're afraid to sing out loud. Yeah. But you sure talk out there. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. You're at the game. You know what I mean? And you're, you're at the concert, you know, the lighters and doing all this. But in church, you don't know how to do it because you're afraid. Yeah. You're afraid to express your love for God. And that's my job to teach you what that's all about. Yeah. Why we do what we do. Why we, you know what I mean? Why, and I'm not going to tell you that this morning, but you know what I mean? Our job is to come and, and worship God. Yeah. Our job is to come and lift holy hands. Yeah. And to sing and to praise him and even to dance and move. You danced in the clubs. You were the first one backing that thing up everywhere and they had to put tail lights on you. Get out of the way. Dropping things like they're hot and spinning your wife and all this stuff. But you come to church and you're dead. Either that tells me one thing, either God's dead. Or there's something wrong in our lives. Yeah. And, we, and, and one of the purposes, and I'll tell you this morning, but our purpose, number one, is to worship God. Yeah. Worship Him in the beauty of His holiness. Yeah. In the fear of the Lord. Yeah. In reverence toward our God. To honor Him and not be ashamed. Right. If we can't do it in the midst of a 30 people, what, what makes you think you're going to do it out there in a bunch of 30 heathen? Come on now. You with me? Over here, there's liberty. He said, where the Spirit of God is, there's liberty. There's freedom. Amen. There ain't freedom at your job to do that. You with me? When we come to church, we're here to worship. And that's, that's what I'm going to talk about, our first purpose. Amen? Over the next few weeks, I will be speaking on the five purposes of the church. Amen? Amen. To remind us or to enlighten us as to why we do exist. Amen? Amen? 
These five purposes, now I want you to, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Those of you watching my YouTube, I want you to write this stuff down. Don't just listen to me. Get your pen, get your papers, write stuff down so that you remember this. Because maybe one day you're going to be pastoring your own church. Amen. And you're going to need to know that there's more purpose than getting up here and screaming and shouting. But there's a world out there that's dying and going to hell. And we need to do something about Amen. it. We need to be the ones that God launches out to go change this world for Jesus, not just to attend a nice Sunday service. Come on, somebody. The five purposes of the church are found in two, uh, in two great scriptures. The first one is Matthew 22, verse 37 through 40. Number one, the first purpose is love, thy, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Amen. Number two purpose is found in that same, same uh, uh, context there. Uh, it, it's, and the second commandment is, is love your neighbor as yourself. Now remember the first one is love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And that's what we're gonna to talk today. I'm telling you the five purposes, this is number two, to love your neighbor as yourself. And I'll give you them purposes as we go. The second scripture is found in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. The second scripture is found in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, and it brings in the third through the fifth purpose. The third purpose is go and make disciples of all nations. The fourth is in that same group of scriptures, baptize them. And the fifth purpose is teach them to obey. Amen. Today we're going to look at, we're going to talk about purpose number one. In Matthew 22, verse 36 and 37, a, a, a man came to him, a scribe came to him, and he said this, he said, teacher, what is the most important command uh, commandment in the law or in the Ten Commandments and he said that Jesus answered love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind Amen. the word that best describes this purpose is worship Amen. loving the Lord your God with all your heart your soul your strength the word that describes that for us is worship best describes it the Greek word for worship is the word latruo. It's a, it's a Greek word. It's spelled L-A-T-R-E-U-O, latruo. And it means this, to minister unto God. You know, to minister, you know what that means? To serve. To serve. You with me? Yeah. It means to minister unto God. It's also defined as reverent love and, all, and allegiance to God. Reverent love. That's where we get the word fear. You with me? It's not we're afraid of God. It's that we're just like in awe of God. We reverence Him. You with me? And allegiance. You know how you say pledge allegiance to the flag? What you're saying is I'm for this country. I pledge my love, my faith, my, 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 my uh, how would you say, to protect this country. Amen. You with me? And God, and, and what we're doing when we're worshiping, is we're pledging our allegiance to the Lamb of God. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Our allegiance, our loyalty, our love to God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Uh, worship is the one thing that God, de that God desires. John chapter 4, verse 23 says this, But a time is coming. Remember, they were talking about worshipers, the woman at the well. He said, But a time is coming, and, and it is already here. Everyone, or every, every, even now, excuse me, the true worshipers are bringing, are being led by the Holy Spirit to worship the Father according to the truth. Amen. 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 It says, these are, the, these are the ones that the Father is seeking <coughs> to worship Him. Amen? Amen. To reverently fear Him, to, 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 to minister to Him. He's looking for people. They were arguing about, should we go to the church over here, or should we go to the church over there? And He says, you know, there's coming a time, He said, where well, you're going to worship God in spirit and in truth. He says, He's not going to be over there, over here. He says, you know what, God's looking for people that worship Him in the spirit. Amen. 
Because a lot of times we put things and we put limits and we put all this and God said, I don't care where you're at, Safeway, you could be worshiping God in the produce aisle. Huh? You could be at work and then, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's your break and, and you're worshiping God and just listening to, the, to, to a song on your phone or something like that, just worshiping. Or you don't even need music. You with me? You could just kneel somewhere. You're, you're going to realize that a lot of times when, when, when the demoniac, the thousand demons came to Jesus and he worshipped Jesus, what he did was he bowed before him. And so worship is not a song. You with me? It's, 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 it's a lifestyle. It's an action. It's something you do. When you, when you worship the king, you bow before him. So I encourage you, try this at home. Try this and take some time and shut the TV off and go bow down in your bedroom and worship God and begin to pray. Amen. Amen. Um, 1 Peter 2.9, it says that you're a chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, a peculiar people to declare the praises of him that has called you out of darkness. Amen. Amen. When we worship God, we're declaring the praises of him. We're not ashamed and we're not embarrassed. Right. You know what I mean? That you know what that's like, men? Because I want to talk to you men, because I want I want to I want to help you understand, because sometimes the ladies, you know what I mean, they get it and the men, hmm, what do you say, honey? You know what I mean? That's like that's like being ashamed of your wife. That's like being ashamed of the one that you say you love the most in the whole wide world and you walk ahead of her because you're ashamed maybe uh, uh, whatever you with me yeah. and, and you're, you're you don't want to you don't know is that your one yeah <laughs> you know and, and, and no man you know what i mean when you love somebody you're not a say hey man i want to introduce my yeah. wife you know what i mean and you're excited about it and you with me yeah. and, 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 and sometimes we do that to the lord are you saved or Jesus? Yes. But you're walking way ahead or you're ashamed or you stay back or, you know, you know what I mean? You may see everybody else on your, you know what I mean? What, what is that? What's that about? You wouldn't do that to your wife. You with me? Don't do it to God. Don't be ashamed of the Lord. Don't be ashamed of what he's done. He pulled you out of darkness. The thing is, yeah, man, come on. You got to understand that. We were living in darkness. We were, you, you know what I mean? Even though you think you're all that and a bag of chips and you had your life together, you were in darkness, man. You were all jacked up. And, don't, and, and when you realize that, shh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I'm not ashamed. You with me? Could you imagine if we taught this to our young boys? You with me? Everybody acting a fool. Everybody following the leader. Everybody doing all that. And you're, you're a young kid, man. Just worshiping God. So strong in the Lord. Know who he is in Christ or who she is. Because guess what? They, they look and they see daddy. Yeah. Lifting holy hands to God. They look and they see mama lifting holy hands unashamed in the house, at work, in a store, worshiping God, praising Him for who He is. That's why you were created. How do we love God with all our hearts? By worshiping Him. What is worship? Worship is when you express your love to God. Amen? And I put this in parentheses. I, had, I uh, how do you say, revised my, my sermon here. What is, what is worship? And I put, when you express your love to God, and, and I put in parentheses, by singing, by clapping, by lifting up your hands, by dancing. I told you, you used to tear the club up. And you stand like this in church. That's right. Come on. He's out of shame. Yeah. Or even kneeling before him, Amen. you're worshiping him. Amen. Ministering unto God and his needs. Amen. Have you ever wondered what God needs? Not just what you need. God needs worship. God needs praise. It's not because he's insecure. It's not because, you know what I mean, have you, has your wife ever asked you, honey, do you love me? Sometimes my wife asks me, honey, do you love me? And it's not because we've been married 30 years, she's getting old timers, and she's forgetting. <laughs> it's just that she wants to 
You know what I mean? To, yeah. to, to know. Do so, so, you still love me? You, you love me? Yes, I love you, babe. I always tease. I say, man, I told you when we got married I love you, and if I change my mind, I'll let you know. <laughs> I joke, though, because that's heavy duty. I'll be sleeping in the trailer tonight. <laughs> And I always, I always try and take that time, and I try to be the best husband that I can. And I, and, and really, in all reality, I minister to my wife. That's right. I minister to her. See, it's not just about most men. Think it's just about. That's right. <laughs> yeah, see, that, uh, uh, listen, let me tell you something. A dog can do that. Come on now. A dog is like that. A dog doesn't think of, hey, honey, you want to marry me? He's just like. Let's get it on. <laughs> but God saved you and God blessed you so that you could minister to your wife. It, it, a priestly. You with me? Ministry. When she's sick, there you are by her side. Ministry says, Satan, I rebuke you. I plead the blood over my lady. I plead the blood over my wife's sickness. I command you, get off her in Jesus' name. And because you take that authority as the, as the priest of your house. And you minister unto her and you, you love her and you show her that not just the, 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 the slow dancing and all that, but can you, can you lay hands on her and pray over her? You with me? Can you speak to her and tell her words that are going to comfort her? Baby, you know I love you. Man, you're the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> you're awesome. You're amazing. You know, you know how I learned to do that? By ministering to God. Right. You with me? Amen. By ministering. See, because I tell people, you're a player. You can just say, hey, baby doll, what's up, man? <laughs> Is your daddy an angel? Because you must have fallen from heaven. You know, and all that. So you know how that, that goes. You can sweep that woman off her feet. You can do all this, but you stand in church. <laughs> and that's the mark of a true uh, a romantic. If you can woo the Lord Amen. to come, come here, Lord. Come to set the atmosphere. I, got, I lit a candle, Lord God. I got some music when I'm worshiping you. I'm doing it, God's like, woo! I'll show you, man. I'll check it out, man. This is heavy duty. Acts 2, 46 to 47 says that they worshiped together. This is the new church. This is the, the New Testament church that just got saved. God moved, 3,000 saved. You know what I mean? All this stuff. And the first things they're doing is they're worshiping together. In other words, when church was on, they were there. They worship together and they understood the need to come together. It's not just based on what you feel or how you're going, but on what others might need. That's ministry. I hope you guys are getting this. The worship, they worship together at the temple each day. So let me say every day. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper. We just took that. And they shared their meals with great joy. Amen. And generosity. Amen. Verse 47, all the while praising God. You with me? See, this is more than just coming on Sunday morning. This is being a body of Christ. This is saying, hey, listen, you know what I mean? Sometimes you'll see us, and we've always got people with us, and you know what I mean? People going to eat, or people coming over, or we're going to their house, or whatever it is. You know what I mean? But that's the body of Christ. That's what you got to understand. This ain't about you showing up on Sunday morning and, and rushing in at 10.05. Yep. Getting your fix and then running out as soon as pastor said amen. So, that, so you don't have to talk to nobody. That's not a church. That's religion. You're still in bondage. You with me? But to, but to fellowship and hang around and be a part and say, hey, come to my house. You with me? Let me make you some food. Let me bless you. You know what I mean? That's, that's what a church does. Amen. Um... I have, we all have a basic human need, power to live on. Our task is to exalt the Lord in our lives. Amen. To exalt means to elevate, to raise, to praise, to lift high. That's our, that's our job, is to lift Jesus higher. Yeah. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. That's our job, is to lift him high. That's, your, that's your, how you serve the Lord. 
Come on. When you come to church and you're lifting them high and you're getting excited, you're doing all that, you understand people are watching you. There may be people that come that have never been in church and this and that, and they're looking at you. Do you know that Mahatma Gandhi, you know, he went into a, he, he was looking for the Lord Gandhi. Yeah. He was looking for something in his life. He was looking for something great. He was looking for God, and he went into a Christian church searching. Yeah. And do you know that he writes and says, when I went into this Christian church, I seen a bunch of people seated during their worship service. I seen them cleaning their nails while they were singing to their God. I seen them talking and irreverently moving about and doing this. And he said to himself, he says, if this is the way that Christians worship their God, I don't want any part of this, this religion. Yeah. And do you know that Gandhi walked out of that church? to only go start his own movement and his own thing and all this stuff, you know what I mean, where he felt like he was going to worship God and stuff. What a shame that somebody would come into the church and be turned off by you. Because they look and they say, well, these people don't love their God. If they love their God, see, see love is expressing yourself. Love ain't just coming home from work, throwing your shoes off and, and saying, woman, do this now and do that now. That's not love. You're, gonna, you're not going to be married very long. You with me? Love is coming home and after having worked, come and minister to baby, sit down. Let me make you dinner. Or let me take you out. Get your, go get dolled up. Daddy's going to take you to eat. <laughs> We're going to go to your favorite restaurant. Huh? Get whatever you want. Whatever. My wife, I know, what do you want to eat? I don't know what I want. I said, wherever you want to go, babe. I'll eat anything. You want cereal? I'll eat cereal. You want bologna? I'll eat bologna. You want steak and lobster and shrimp? I'll eat that too. Wherever you want. Because my job as a husband is to minister to you. It's to bless you. you. You see, because we represent Christ to them. We're the head over the wife. See, the head don't beat people up. Right, the head don't abuse your wife, it don't speak down to your wife, it don't yeah. beat her up, it don't talk down to her. You know what I mean? It, it ministers. Christ came to minister to you. Yeah. He didn't beat you up to get you saved, did he? He didn't make you feel less than so that you'll finally, you know, in fear and trembling, worship him because he's going to beat you. He came to minister. He's here to serve. He came to serve. He said, you know what he did to his disciples? He said, take your shoes off. And he got down on his knees, took his robe off, and he washed their big old, burly, stinky, nasty, ingrown toenail feet. Come on. And he ministered unto them. And he said, I've done this to show you something. Go and do likewise. Go minister to each other, minister to people. So you don't know when you come to church and you're apart and you're worshiping God that you're washing their feet. They look at you and say, man, I thank God because I see brother here and he's faithful and he's committed and he's doing the man and he gives me strength to keep coming. Amen. You don't realize people are watching you. They watch the way you worship. I tell Manuel, I said, Manuel, you know, one time he came and I was watching in the back and Manuel was up up here somewhere and there was a young boy over here and that young boy was watching Manuel and, 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 and Manuel was just worshiping and he, I looked and he, and, and he was worshiping just like that. Oh. And then Manuel would put his hands down and that little boy would look, he'd put his hands down. Then Manuel would lift one hand and that little boy would look over and he'd lift the same hand. Everything he did, the little boy did. You with me? And he was an example. He was a witness in worship. You with me? That little boy was doing what he seen another grown man do. Maybe he looked at man and said, man, that's a bad dude. I, you know, I want to be like that man when I grow up. What is he doing? And he lifts hand. I'm going to lift hand because I want to be a man of God when I get old. Where did, they, where did they come in? Where did that same boy came in as Emmanuel? Just sitting there, you know, do, doing his nails on his phone, scrolling through, not scripture, through Facebook and everything else while he's in service and stuff. You know what that little boy said? That's what I'm going to become. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And we don't realize that our worship is a testimony to people yeah. even in our own church. Right. You with me? Yeah. I don't look at people and, you know what I mean, to, 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 to see, you know, what they're saying and this and that. I look at you and watch you in worship. Yeah. And I can tell about you in worship. Amen. You with me? Because worship shows a grateful heart. Worship shows, man. You know, and it's not because we come in here because we're all having such a great day. 
right. You with me? Right. You might come into this church even this morning or next week or whatever, and all hell has come against you. And just to get to church was a was the biggest, the hardest task you've ever done. Because yeah. you've everything fought you, not even come. Just give up. But you come into church and you lift your holy hands to God and you say, God, I need you, Lord, and I worship you. And you look and you see people praising God and stuff and you think that everything's good and they may be going through hell, but they made their mind up. I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to praise God in my bad times. Anybody can praise him in the good times. Come on now. Anybody can praise him when you got money and things are going good and you feel good and you're healthy and the job and the kids are getting A's. Yeah. Huh? Come in here and worship when your kids got an F. Right. When they just suspended them or maybe got arrested and they're in PYC. Yeah. Right. And you're, you're, you're not over there a mess. You're over here at church. Right. Thank you, Jesus. You're in control. God, I worship you. I cast all my cares on you, Lord, for you care for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You do what you need to in that kid. I'm going to worship you. I've given you my life. Amen. 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 Scripture commands us to celebrate God's presence by, by uh, magnifying the Lord. Amen. Amen. Magnifying the Lord and exalting His name in Psalms 34, 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. Amen. God needs your worship. You ever, wonder, you, ever, you ever understand that? You ever think about that? You ever think, you know, one time, let me tell you this, one time we were in our service, and we had a church by Central High, beautiful sanctuary, huge, and we were in there worshiping, and man, I love to worship God, that's where I get my strength from, like an addict gets their fix, I get my strength in the presence of God, he says, in the presence is fullness of joy, you with me? And I was worshiping God, and I was praising Him, man. We were getting it on. We were excited. We were dancing for God. We were just all pumped up. And all of a sudden, because, see, that's the way we do things, and we're not tuned into the Holy Spirit and what God's feeling or what He needs. And He stopped me. He said, son. And I'm like, and I felt this, this like somebody was grieved. Somebody was, was, was upset. And I felt, and I said, Lord, what, what's, what's going on? And He said, son, I'm not, I'm not doing too good. And I said, what, what's wrong? And he said, my, my, he says, man, look at all the abortions that are happening in the world. He said, look at the people that are hurting all over the world and this and that. And listen, I tapped in for a moment to what he was thinking of and not what I was thinking. I tapped into what his heart was saying and how his heart was feeling not how i wanted to rejoice and be glad but but sometimes you come in and you see your mom and dad and you know something's up right, right. Yeah. you know what's 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 wrong with dad right. he's not smiling he didn't say much when i came in he what's wrong dad what's wrong yeah. we ought to make that move yeah. we ought to be considerate we ought to be you with me yeah. we're here for him god we're here for god He's not just here for you. A lot of times we come here, oh God, do this, do that, and help me, and all this. And we right. never say, God, what, how are you doing today? Right. And he says, son, my heart is broken for the babies that are dying. And all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, I felt his heart. You with me? Yes. And, and it's like sometimes we need to tap in and say, God, how are you doing? What, what do you need today, God? And, 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 and that's what worshiping in the spirit is. It's not coming in and just making a, uh, you know what I mean? That's why sometimes we'll go off track of what Naomi has, what song she has, because we're not here to go by a list and do all this. Like, are you, are you with me? We're here to be led by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will tell you how to worship God. We don't know how to pray as we ought, Romans 8, 26. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us. The groanings that cannot be uttered. He that knows the mind of the, the Spirit, knows, or the mind of God knows what the heart of the, of the Lord is. He knows what, what, what God wants. He knows what He needs. And when you let the Holy Spirit, He'll lead you in true worship. Amen. It's not just singing songs. It's a heart condition. Amen. You ever heard that song, We're Coming Back to the Heart of Worship? Yeah. Yeah. Where it's all about you, all about you. It's not about me, Lord. Right. You with me? Right. That came after a pastor shut everything down in his church. And said, we're not going to worship. We're not going to do this. We're not going to preach. We're going to pray and we're going to seek the heart of God. Amen. And that song was birthed out of that movement. Right. 
We're coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you, God. It's not about us no more. That's true worship. God needs your worship. In Exodus chapter 7, verse 16, if you're taking notes, please write this one down. It tells us the reason God wanted to bring his people out of Egypt. Remember the Exodus? Remember, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, uh, Bert, Burton, what's his name? Bert, or what, what, the, the, the Moses man in the first movie. What's his name, Juanito? You remember who I'm talking about? Charlton Heston played Moses in the, in, in the Ten Commandments and all that. And you see God bring him out with a mighty hand. This is why God did that. This is the reason. It wasn't because God just said, hey, I want all my people free and all this stuff. It, watch what it says. He, uh, uh, Exodus 7, 16 says this. The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, talking to Pharaoh, he says, has sent me, Moses said to him, to tell you, let my people go so that they could worship me in the wilderness. All God wanted was three days of worship. He told Moses, he said, I'll ask him to let you come out on a three-day pass. Amen. Hmm? Amen. He said, so that you can come and that you can worship me. Amen. You with me? Amen. That's what God wanted. Amen. All he wanted was his people to come out and celebrate him. Maybe they would have come out for three days. He would have sent them back. Yeah. Said, go back over there and finish your time. But, but Pharaoh was hard, and he wouldn't let him. Amen? Amen? And as a result, God not only brought him out for three days, but God set him free. Yeah. God brought him out permanently. God said, I'm like, I want you out so you can worship me. Yeah. Why did he call you out of darkness? Yeah. To proclaim his praises. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't call you out of darkness, break, drug addiction, alcoholism, perversion, all this stuff, so you could come and sit in the service from 10 to 12. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Recognize. Amen. 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 Our, our job or our objective in worship is to magnify the Lord. To magnify means to make greater in size, to enlarge, to amplify, to, to intensify, or to heighten. Amen. To make or see God bigger than your problems. Right. Amen. Come on now, you know, understand and watch this. When Naomi's sitting here talking about going through hard times this week with her heart and with fear and with all this stuff and stuff. See, the devil will come. Right. He's going to come against you. And you men heard it. Me and Manny were talking before service. Pastor Mickey said, when you go down from this mountain, it's, he says, expect the struggle. Because the enemy is going to come against you. He said, that's what God showed me, that you guys are going to struggle and go through a hard time. He said, but don't be afraid. He says, but God's going to bring you through. Yeah. See, but that's the thing about us. When we're going through the struggle, man, we want to book. We want to run. We want to get out of there. We want to quit our job. We want to do all that stuff because we don't understand. And pastor tells us how time and time again, trusting God. You know what I mean? It's more than just you saying it. It's when you're in that storm and you think you're going to die. And God says, what are you, what's wrong with you over your little faith? And he speaks to the storm and the, even the winds and the waves of the sea obey him. Because he spoke a word. He said, Where, where's your faith? Oh, you have a little faith. And we realize at those times, gee, God, I guess I don't trust you as much as I think I do. Because it's easy to trust him when we're in an atmosphere of Christians and people. But trusting him when you're going and you're feeling, he says, there's nothing you can do. See, right now what Paul needs is to trust in God. Because there's nothing medicine or all that can do for you. It might stop you. It might bring your heart rate down. It might do that. But you're still the same old man when you're done. God wants to set you free. God wants to give you a new heart. God said, I've not given you a spirit of fear. But a power and a love and a sound mind. That's what God came to do in our lives. And he came to help us so that we can worship him. Our job is to magnify, to amplify the job, to exalt him, to heighten God, make him bigger than your problems. It's easy to say in church, when you get out, there's the test. 
Is he bigger than your marriage? Is he bigger than your physical sickness? Is he bigger than, the, than what you're going through? In your, and you know what I mean? Because listen, that's why it's so good to get out of your houses and come to church. The church means the called out ones. Called not just out of darkness. Called out of your houses to get over here and worship God. Because you're staying in that place. In that place you built that that, that that realm, if you would, of worry, of fear, and the longer you stay there by yourself, worrying and thinking and all this stuff, the devil has a playground right there, and you don't even know, you built an altar in your home, but it ain't an altar where God's moving, it's an altar of fear, it's an altar of sickness, it's an altar of strife, and, and you don't know any better, you get in there by yourself, oh, I can't go, I don't need to go, yes you do, break out of that thing, get over here to church. Come and worship God and, and get his power to break that off your life. Go home and open them blinds. Tell that devil, get out of here. You don't belong in my home. We're taking back our children. We're taking back our marriages. We're taking back our worship. You're not going to. He said in, in the Psalms, he said, why so downcast, oh my soul? Hangs, hands hanging low, all this stuff, and we're singing, we got the victory, and the devil's laughing at you, he says, shh, get victory, they're all jacked up, they're all bound, they don't even know, look at them, they don't even praise their God, they don't realize that there's power in praise, they don't realize that when they lift them hands that are hanging low, and strengthen those knees that are weak, they don't realize they're going to get power from on high, and God's going to move in their life. Stay defeated, the devil wants you to. He wants your hands down. He wants you thinking. That's why it's important to get over here and hear what the Spirit of God's saying to you. Because your mind will play games against you. Hey, they don't even like you. Nobody, everybody hates you. And he'll even come to the place where he says, why don't you kill yourself? And you guys don't even don't even understand. It may not even be you, but we have children in our church. You know what I mean? That deal with this stuff, and they even think, "What am I going to? Should I end my life?" And we're over there with our own lives, doing all that. We don't even we're not even considerate of each other. That there's young kids out there that are wanting to end their life because they don't know what to do. They go to church and they see us. And they say, there's no power in the church. Right. There's no power at school. There's no power at home. Fighting, strife, and all this. I just, I'll just end it. Right. And who's to blame? Right. Them? No. No. Or us around it that right. should be lifting them up, should be encouraging, should be should be blessing them. Amen. Should be speaking in their lives. Right. Come on, somebody. It's not just about us anymore. Right. It's about the people. It's about the, 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 the families. Amen. Amen. We should enjoy expressing our love to God. The emotional benefit of work of worship is stimulation. You know what stimulation is? Amen. Huh? Amen. Is that oozy feeling you Amen. feel when you fall in love with that boyfriend? Oh man, he is so cute. You know the posters on your bedroom wall? That's stimulation. The Facebook pages and the, what is that, uh, what, what is that called? The, the, where they go looking for a, a, a spouse? Christian Mingo. Ah, man, what are you looking for? Oh, green eyes. Woo, stimulation. You know what the benefit of worshiping God is? Stimulation. Stimulation on the inside that goes beyond your carnal flesh. Come on, somebody. Yeah, that has its purpose. And, and in marriage, that has its purpose. But you know what? In life, stimulation comes from worship. Let me tell you what I'm, let me show you what I'm talking about. Stimulation means to rouse to activity or heighten. Amen. Action. To rouse to activity or heighten action. When you worship God, you get his attention. Amen. And stir or rouse him to activity Amen. on your behalf. Amen. You don't believe me. Let me tell you. God <laughs> drowned Pharaoh. Amen. He drowned Pharaoh's army in two, in what was it, two feet of water or two or several inches of water. God drowned horses and all, you know what I mean? No, man, he overwhelmed them. 
He healed me because why? Because they wanted to go worship. And it looks like the devil's after you, but don't worry, God's going to drown them. If your motives are right, if you're going to worship God, he's going to take care of your enemies. You don't have to worry. He said, I'll make you go on dry ground. You'll walk across, not even get your Stacy's muddy. <laughs> Huh? God, God, uh, God drove out over a thousand demons, remember the demoniac? Yes. Out of a man because he bowed down and worshipped him. Yes. A thousand demons, he said, get out of him! Because that man, just an ounce of hope, boom, he bowed down and Jesus said, come out! Set that man free, he's in his right mind and he went and preached the gospel. Yes. Huh? God uh, busted into a prison and set all the prisoners free because Paul and Silas began to pray and worship God. After they were gone, they were beat up. They were literally bloody. Every all how had come against them. They're in the inner prison. All the inmates are around, probably talking, playing cards, or, or in their cells. And, and they're there. And, they, and after all the beating that they went through, he, they're in stocks. And he tells them, hey, bro, what's that song that Naomi used to sing? <laughs> and they begin to worship they begin to pray they begin to magnify God all of a sudden God's in heaven like whoo it's hot man. They're, 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 they're getting my attention but man look at what they're going through and they're still praising me but angels come here we gotta do something about it boom he hit that prison every door came open not just theirs every door came and every shackle and chain fell off these men because of two men that were willing to worship so you don't realize that your worship's going to break through your family's life your family will be saved when you turn and begin to really worship god and trust him come on somebody Four purposes, or four things occur during during uh, genuine worship. Amen. Four things that occur during genu genuine worship. Number one, God's presence is felt. Amen. You can feel His presence in that place. Amen. Number two, God's pardon is offered. Whenever His presence is here, God's always saying, "Hey, I'll forgive you. Just come to me. I'll help Amen. you." See, some of you this morning, you're going through some stuff that you say, he don't know what I'm going through, but God does. Right, amen. Right, amen. And I'm telling you, if you will turn to God, he will, he will not only forgive your sins, he'll heal your land, he'll heal your family, he'll save your marriage. He did it for me. We just celebrated 30 years of marriage, and God, she hated my guts. I'd done so much wrong to her, but God turned her heart around. When I began to worship and follow God, he touched my wife, and she fell in love with me. Amen. Hmm? Amen. After all I did, amen? Number two, or number three, God's purpose, purposes are revealed. Amen. See, when you're in church, and you're like this, and you're worshiping God, God will start speaking to you. He'll start revealing his purpose to you, why he saved you. And number four, God's power is displayed. Amen. The greatest commandment Jesus stated was to love the Lord your God with all your heart. And all, I put it in all capitals, all your heart. See, he don't want half your heart. He wants all your heart. Amen. With all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. To worship him with all you are, for he is your God. Amen. Amen. Stand with me this morning.